Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another monthly devlog update here on YouTube with Nazareth Studios. I would like to start off this video by uh, letting you all know that I won't be here next week. I'll, I'll be on vacation. Um, so with that being said, you know, I, I won't be here to live stream. And uh, if you didn't know we live streamed, well, now, now you know. So go ahead and click that notification bell. It'll make you aware of any time I live stream or any time I drop a video. We're doing a lot more work here on YouTube and you can expect more of that occurring in the future. Also, if you didn't know, I've updated the website recently and uh, well, if you wanna go check that out, go check it out. I'll leave a link of it in the description. You can tell me what you think. A lot of exciting things are happening here at the studio and um, I'm actually really excited, guys. God has really been blessing this project and uh, I just feel blessed to be working on it. But without further ado, let's jump into the monthly devlog update. Bloop. Subscribe. Bloop. Now the first thing most of you are gonna notice is the animations and yeah, they're, they're in, woo. But that's not the part of the video yet, okay? We're talking about the UI. Yeah, look at it, the beautiful stamina bar. Not only does it follow Judah, but depending on where Judah's distance from the camera is, it'll change its scale and transformation, thus ensuring that no matter where the player is, they will always have visible access to their stamina bar, making it easier for them to manage it in tough situations. The implementation process of this system is relatively easy once I sorted everything out. In the UIBP, you're gonna to wanna to get a reference to the player and its stamina system. With these references in mind, you can set the stamina bar depending on the state of that system, things such as the percentage and the color. After that, you can get the player's uh, distance from the camera, create an offset um, that dictates when you wanna start scaling and transforming that UI, and then you minus that offset against the distance so once you've hit that mark, you start off at zero, and then you use that same number to scale and transform the UI. And now I wanna talk about the character movement component and how it receives input from the player. Originally, there was no way to detect whether the player was lightly pressing down on the joystick or pressing all the way down on the joystick, which made movement look a little clunky. And as you can see, I've remedied that a little bit. And while it's still far from perfect, the way I've been able to do this is by creating a C++ function that, depending on the input received by Unreal from the player, will create a float that normalizes the input received to a range between 0 and 1. Then, we take the max acceleration and the velocity and we multiply this by that float, and from that we're able to get a range between 0 and 1. Essentially, if your max velocity is 500 and you multiply it against this float, you'll get a number between 0 and 500 depending on the input of the player. Additionally, in order to get this system to work the way I wanted it to work, I had to create a any key event in the events graph of the third person BP. On both the press and release states, we check the key that's being pressed against the list of keys that we have in an array to make sure that the player is selecting a movement input that is valid. And this is essentially what dictates what the min and max range will be in this function here. And that's how I've been able to detect the level of pressure that the player is applying to the joystick on a gamepad. Now let's talk about animations. I don't wanna to get too deep into it because just like everything else in this game, the animations are still in a very incomplete state and what i mean by that is we're still very far from having something that looks actually decent and even after that we want it to look superb right so there's still a lot that needs to be done to make the animation look this way and to be quite frank it's just going to take a lot of effort on my end to get them to a state where they look amazing and as of the moment the only animations we have are for climbing and walking we do have some jumping animations that are in the process but as of the moment i'm working on a physics falling function this function is gonna be responsible for handling a falling state when a player is climbing. This is how we're going to be able to get the character to lift off visually in the Y axis while still landing on the wall without completely falling down. 
And that's pretty much it. But it's only the tip of the iceberg because there's so much more going on here behind the scenes at the studios. I can't dive too deep into it, but I'll let you know that it has to do with mechanics that are going to change the scope of the game entirely. And with that being said, at some point in the future, after we get a prototype set up, we're going to be looking into fundraising. So if you're interested in supporting the game further, please watch out for that. As a final piece de la resistance, I'd like to leave you all off with a song composed by our audio engineer here at Nazareth Studios for the game. I'll make sure to leave a link to his Spotify in the description of this video. So if you want to check out more of his work, you can go ahead and do that. But other than that, I hope you have a good day. God bless. See you next month for the next update. But until then, I'll catch you later and happy game dev. Peace.